Four years ago, Cynthia Payne was sentenced to 18 months' imprisonment for keeping a disorderly house. Madam Sun of Streatham gave the popular newspapers everything they had ever wished for, kinky sex, anonymous top people, a police raid and, the most intriguing element of all, payment by lunch in voucher. The clients, all elderly, would pay Cynthia paying £25 at the beginning of a party, for which they would receive lunch in vouchers entitling them to generous helpings of food, drink and sex. By chance, Carl Davis, the composer, used to live next door to Cynthia Payne in Streatham. Davis tipped off Jack Gold to the potential of her story, and, on Cynthia Payne's release from Holloway she was fetched in a Rolls Royce, provided by a client, Gold's Houston Films Company signed her up. A television film is in production. When a book of her life was also suggested, Cynthia Payne insisted that she only wanted a good book written, not a trashy one. A meeting with Tom Mashler at Jonathan Cape was arranged. Listening to her tell you her life story, Mashler was half-hearted until Cynthia mentioned that, towards the end of his life, her father used to attend her sex parties. The deal was signed, and the novelist and critic Paul Bailey was sent to Streatham on a preliminary run to see whether biographer and subject would hit it off. I can always judge people by the way they ring my doorbell, Cynthia recollects, and Paul's ring was timid, very timid indeed. Had never been to a brothel before, you see, so he was a bit nervous and shy, if you know what I mean. But he was ever so smartly dressed. For the said hour or two he hardly said a word, so I just kept on talking till he eased up. You don't realize when you first say Paul what a good writer he is, do you? From the moment I entered, she just didn't stop talking, Bailey says. In fact, she was secretly taping the meeting, and she played me the tape later. I say about five words in two hours. At that time, I wasn't at all sure I wanted to do the book. I didn't want to get involved in just another tedious account of sexual escapades. But I soon realized she was very different from that. I was intrigued by her relationship with her father, and the way in which they were reconciled when he began coming to her sex parties. S.H.E.'s also so jolly and homely, and she has such a good sense of humor. She takes her clients' requests seriously but she also finds them very, very funny. The first time she told me the story about the bank manager, I was helpless with laughter. The bank manager wanted to be covered with mud when he visited Streatham. Cynthia, a meticulous choreographer, puzzled over how his request could be met and then hit upon covering him in baby oil and emptying the dust from hoover bags all over him. The bank manager was delighted. My own bank manager, who is National Westminster, was very keen to know which bank that bank manager worked for, Bailey says. When I told him that it was the Midland, he was overjoyed. To be honest, I was only doing the book for the money, Cynthia says. I thought that talking to the person who was going to write my life was going to be a bit of a bore. But once Paul and me got going we were like a couple of kids. Ooh, we had such laughs. Now it's all over, I feel a bit sad. I think we were a good team, a good balance, if you know what I mean. H.E.'s on the sensitive side, and I'm rather the pushy sort. But H.E.S. a bit of a naughty little boy on the quiet. We're both schemers, if you know what I mean. But doesn't he write well he got me to a tea uncanny really? Author Paul Bailey with his dog. Photograph Jane Bone though Cynthia grew increasingly enthusiastic about the project some of her clients were less amused. I think it's disgusting that someone should write a book like that, one of them, a political journalist, told Bailey, who's publishing it. Jonathan Cape but that's a respectable company. Seeing that Bailey was disconcerted by this attack, Cynthia took him to one side and showed him a photograph of the political journalist dressed in drag having his bottom smacked by another man. The book treats such fetishes with curiosity, understanding and humor. Some fetishes seem to come by accident, Bailey says. Something excites them by chance when they are making love, and, having discovered it, they like to repeat it. But a lot refer back to the very first sexual experience of the person. For instance, one of Cynthia's slaves Cynthia is served by two male part-time slaves had his first erection as he was cleaning the shoes of a maid in a house in which he served. He likes to recapture that moment whenever he can. Cynthia thinks that there is too much about her enclave in the book, and not enough about her. She reads the chapters about her early life again and again, Bailey says, and she cries every time. 
I suspect she hasn't ever managed to finish the second part of the book, though. All those transvestites, they're so boring was the way she put it. An English madam has much in common with Bailey's fiction. Old people, people who must struggle through life and people who only find contentment in adopting artificial roles have all moved from his novels into reality. Sometimes when Cynthia was charting away I thought to myself, I could have invented you. But just as often she would surprise him by her unpredictability. I love her determination to shock. She told the shy editor of our paperback company that she could see he had a harden. She was always threatening to send people round to cure sexual problems she imagined I had, people who would pander to my darkest dreams. For a long time, I was terrified every time the doorbell rang. At the moment, Cynthia's energies are being channeled into planning the launch party. She is delighted that Nigel Dempster has already accepted. It is being held in her Streatham house from three in the afternoon onwards. At six, it is rumoured, some of her friends will be dropping in. An English Madam, The Life and Work of Cynthia Payne, is published by Cape Price £7.50 on Thursday. How to Access the Guardian and Observer Digital Archive